Hi, here we are again. Today we're going to be covering uh, the British World War II equipment, uniform, and pocket trash that was uh, utilized by the British soldier and Commonwealth uh, troops that served with Britain in World War II. Uh, this is part of my collection. The first box that I pulled out was Britain, so that's what we're getting today. Um, it's going to be a little wonky because I'm going to have to move the camera around so we can see the gear. Uh, please forgive me on that. Also, please be aware that um, some of the gear is original, some of it again, reproduction. As I said before, um, I collect and reenact, so uh, in order to get a complete or as complete as possible layout of what a British soldier had, you're going to be forced to do some reproductions because some of this stuff did not survive except for in photographs and um, or limited quantities and with a lot of reenactors and historic collectors out there that makes a lot of this stuff hard to get so you for if you want to like I do since I do these for seminars and everything I, I want people to see and touch the items. Reproductions are vital for that. Try to be as accurate as possible with the, that. Now, some of my reproductions you're going to see are not as accurate, and that may be because of the construction materials that are utilized not being as much alike. Like with tin cans and other things, their manufacturing has changed since World War II. Uh, one of the big things regarding some of the reproductions is uh, canned goods were part of the uh, foodstuffs that armies got. Our canned technology changed since then, not just in size, but in the literal construction of the cans. We discovered that making those little wavy cans makes them stronger so that they survive impact better. In World War II, the cans were straight-walled. Um, it's very hard to find straight-walled cans. Also, sizing of cans has altered quite a bit. So, some of this stuff is not exactly the same. But, going for labels as much as possible or as close as possible, that's what you do to get that look, that appearance, that feel. Because, you know, we have a totally different regard for how troops are supplied with food in the field today. The MRE being a beautiful example of that, where it's this wonderful little plastic bag with a whole bunch more plastic bags inside of it, and that's where all the food is. Because we kept striving towards lighten the load, lighten the load, and taste and appearance. I gotta admit, if you take a look at some of the World War II rations that were given, taste and appearance weren't necessarily the priority so much as food. And sometimes, because science of food has changed and been improved so much, sometimes eh, there was a fail. Um, the testing may not have been in the right regards as they developed some of this stuff. And then, of course, there's the issue of is the food, military food rations being used correctly? Uh, K rations and British 24-hour rations are a beautiful example of this. They were never meant as a long-term feeding. They were meant as a landing feeding. Then after the, for about 48 hours to 72 hours, uh, the logistics supply was supposed to be then brought ashore or brought in and field kitchens set up and uh, then like with the British 24-hour ration, you get compo rations, which is boxed can units with to replace the 24-hour ration the, the soldier carried in his pack when he first did his assault. Uh, and that's really the big thing, is that these 24-hour rations or K rations should be considered assault rations first and foremost, and then you were supposed to have field kitchens and supplies brought in, and that would replace those. Because of the convenience that appeared, uh, these rations would continue on for more days than they were meant to. Sorry about that. Um, and uh, as a result, uh, you had some issues that were reported in the field and, and uh, by troops, and which make for interesting reading. Now, 
what you're going to see, I try to theme my, um, my collecting. So what you're going to see is, a field, is the uniform field equipment and uh, pocket trash to tr uh, you know, carry items of a soldier in the 51st Highland Division. Now, I've set up a backstory for this person, so he's an older gentleman. Um, he's a veteran of World War I, recalled for service. He would have seen possibly some home guard service and then been activated into uh, regular service. He's part of the 51st, which is a territorial army. Uh, consider the territorials to almost be like here in America, Reserves National Guard. Uh, you had the regular army and the territorials. So you can almost consider the territorials similar to our National Guard reservists um, if you want to try for an American equivalency. Um, it's not quite that way, but it's close enough to make it understandable. Um, so he's a corporal, and that's by virtue of ex prior experience and age and ability. Um, so we're going to now move over to the moving the camera so you can see the gear, and then I will be doing a little more in-depth on the equipment and showing what's inside the packs and things. Please forbear the camera movement. All right, so we're going to go with the boots first. These were called ammunition boots. The heel plates, hobnails, and toe plates were designed to protect the shoe from long-term damage and wear so that you can get as much wear out of these boots. Soles, as you know today, like to disintegrate very fast if you're marching around a lot. These are the canvas anklets that were worn to blouse the pants. We have the battle dress serge pants with suspenders. We have the battle dress serge tunic. And again, like I said, 51st Highland Division, Argyle and Sutherlands, Corporal, and the battalion rating within the division. An original, this is an original uh, shirt, collarless, enlisted men's shirt. You have the uh, webbing gear that was worn. We will go over that in more detail. The small pack with teacup, we will go over its contents. Yes, that is my Sten gun. It is an airsoft Sten gun. It cannot be made to function for real. This is, as I said, like at reproductions meant as a stand-in. Corporals would have been given, a, were issued the um, machine guns as a sta relatively standard, you would have some corporals carrying the Lee Enfield rifle or Thompson machine guns. Yes, we supplied Thompson machine guns to them during the war as part of Lend Lease. We have the large pack. We have some of the pocket gear that I explained. As a veteran of World War I, this soldier would have been issued the Victory Medal, Service Medal, and area of service. So this is the European star. He, those would have been a relatively standard issue item. These are Mills grenades. Not. They are resin cast reproductions. They are not real grenades. No one panic. I don't have any real grenades. Those things are dangerous to have around. Another service cup. This is a white enamel one. They would have been just as seen as the brown enamel one. Field flash, that is a light respirator gas mask bag. Uh, that was a later war issue item. They had a larger gas mask respirator bag that was carried early in the war. They moved to the light one. We got some rations there. Because this is the 51st Highland Division, we have the Balmoral, the Scottish headdress in battle dress surge. We have the helmet, more pocket items. This is the Fairbairn Sykes service knife. A lot of people know it as a commando knife, but it was also available as a general grab item for troops. A lot of them would have gone for that if they could. And a general service map case. The soldier's service and pay book. This was his military ID. 
with a variety of items that he could have carried in his pocket. If you've been to London, you need your underground map. Telegrams, money, both civilian and military script. The military script was an issue item for invasion purposes. Possibly some theater tickets, family photographs inside that paybook. We call it a paybook. It's really more of a military ID, and because it's called a paybook, doesn't mean you recorded the pay. The, what happened was that you would get the right to draw pay from the military. That's what the sold book, pay book, ID book is all about. Now, I'm going to cut this off here. I'm going to set everything so that I can show things, and then we will do a second video showing close-ups and, and the contents. Thank you for your forbearance on this.